So this is the Dave Protection Diaries vlog 4. Um, we've had a really busy week this week, we've been out and about, done a couple of conferences, um, met some really interesting and fascinating people. Um, even had a trip to the dentist this morning, so excuse me if I'm, if I'm dribbling, I'm not sure I can, uh, I can feel my lip. Um, so we've been doing some really interesting stuff, and we've met some fantastic people, and there's a lot of insights that, are, that I'd like to be able to share with you today. So make sure you follow us on through, um, and we'll show you where we've been, and we'll show you where we've been up to. massive massive opportunity and it's a real opportunity to do things within your businesses it's an opportunity to get um, budgets to get sign off it's to get funding and it's to get a better understanding of your organization it's also given us the opportunity just to just be a better business to talk to our customers to go out and say you know what this is who we are this is what we do this is why we want to know about you and where you live and what you buy and what your interests are because if you tell us this stuff we'll offer you better products, we'll offer you better services, we'll stop sending you the things that you don't want to hear about and we'll send you the things that you do want to hear about. So I'm really excited that I get to talk to you about something completely different today. I'm down here for the Nord InfoSec dialogue and we're running a, a GDPR panel session this morning on life after GDPR, um, business benefits, the sorts of things that we've talked about before. But after that I had to go and do some one-to-one -one vendor sessions. I'm not usually very good doing one-to-one -one sessions and I'm probably not the right person for the vendor to speak to but I thought, you know, I'll go along. Now some of the guys that I met there worked for a company called Axelos, um, which is a, a joint venture um, with a, one of the government organisations. And we were talking about training and best practice and Prince 2 and ITIL and those are the sorts of things that they work, they work on. And I was saying, is there anything that you're looking to do for sort of data protection offices? So that sort of middle gap between having an ISCB or a, or a BCS data protection practitioner certificate um, and the CIPP E and CIPP M from the IAPP. So something operational that people can use that they're not necessarily going to be a dedicated privacy officer, but they are going to work for, for privacy professionals. The thing that really excited me is how they're talking to people. Um, and they've actually they've even written uh, a number of these sort of um, small books. So sort of their books around um, hacking and being hacked and they're like little novels, um, how to avoid that moment, I told you so. But one of the best things that they've written is a, a little thriller, which is this, called Wailing for Beginners, about a CEO um, who gets, gets wailed from a, um, a phishing email and doesn't even, doesn't even realise. This is exactly the sort of thing that really excites me because this is a fantastic way to get information out into the next generation, get information out into six forms and people and get people learning and engaging about it, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this vlog in the first place. Um, so that was what I wanted to share with you. The company name is Axelos. Um, well worth having a look if you're interested in that sort of thing. But if anybody else has got any ideas in how that we get this information out into the next generation and how we train people, apprenticeship schemes, anything like that, please let me know because it is something that I'd really like to get involved in. Okay, so we're back in London today for the Chief Data Officer Exchange. Um, we're running a uh, think tank session today. It's a bit like a round table, but, but slightly different. The idea is to, to pose some questions and facilitate and get people to talk. Um, we're looking at the data governance journey, um, being a business benefit rather than being a business burden. Same thing we've been doing with the, the GDPR, really, but with a slightly different take on it. Um, so it should be an interesting discussion. We'll try and get some get some insights from that as well. <coughs> Standard with every conference now that we go to. Freebies. Vegas, baby! So I've had a really, really couple of uh, interesting days down here at the Chief Data Officer Exchange. Um, the conversation has been has been fantastic. I've learned some really interesting stuff. Um, the networking networking drinks last night probably helped uh, probably helped a little bit, but I've actually met some some really interesting people which I've, I probably didn't expect didn't expect to. Um, a couple of really interesting things for me has been the uh, the explosion in the use of, of AI when people are understanding their their data and what they're doing with their information and how they're using it just watched a, a really fascinating presentation by Lloyds of London around how they're using AI in their underwriting business to answer questions in, in real time, um, which is saving them sort of you know, a day to two days per query, which is, which is really fantastic. Um, the breakout session that we ran, the, the think tank was, was 
it was really, really good. It was only half an hour long, so we, as we got sort of warmed up and got into it, it was almost time to close it down, which is a real shame. But the key takeaways from that for me are that the life cycle of data governance really starts at the very, very beginning. So at the point that you're talking to your customers, when you've got them on the phone, when you've got them on the front line, when they're filling in the, your, your form, when they're buying your product, making sure that you're collecting good, clean data at the very, very beginning is hugely important in a data governance life cycle. This is not a data governance issue. It doesn't belong to the chief data officer. It belongs to the, to the whole business, it belongs to the data owners. Everybody has responsibility for making sure that the data is, is clear and accurate and is up to date. And obviously there are business benefits to that and the GDPR helps to, to push that out to the boardroom and get people thinking about it. Um, but for me, as I say, the real key thing here is that making sure that your front lines understand that they are the, the key to the information, so making sure that they're collecting it accurately, checking people's addresses, checking people's names, and they're not collecting more information than you need. Um, and I think you're going to be in a, in a really good place moving forwards. Thanks for watching.